The National Labor Relations Board was created by Congress to serve as a fair and neutral arbiter in resolving labor disputes between employers and employees. Sadly, the Biden administration has twisted it into a partisan attack dog for big labor interests. It wasn't supposed to be like this. In 1935, Congress passed the National Labor Relations Act to protect against unfair labor practices that existed at that time and to supervise fair union elections. It created the NLRB with a clear purpose in mind. First, to be strictly nonpartisan, consisting of three impartial government members. Second, to be a quasi-judicial body, meaning it would base its rulings on formal records and administrative proceedings and case law. Third, and finally, to act as an independent federal agency. However, this is not how President Biden's NLRB functions today. The Biden administration started its historical politicization of the agency when it fired Trump-nominated and Senate-confirmed General Counsel Peter Robb. No general counsel had ever been fired in the 70-year history of the position until Biden came along. Robb was replaced by the hyper-partisan Jennifer Abruzzo, whose nomination forced a tie-breaking vote in the Senate. This position for this for a position that in years past was filled by neutral government employees. Abruzzo's roots as a union lawyer are in direct contrast with the agency's tradition. And as you would expect, Abruzzo has continued the politicization and weaponization of the NLRB. In an April 2022 memorandum, Abruzzo urged the board to overturn a long-standing precedent regarding employer free speech. The precedent upheld an employer's right to hold meetings and educate workers on unionization, speech which is protected by the First Amendment and the plain text of the law. She argued that employer education was actually, quote, licensed to coerce, unquote. Typical of left-wing activists, the NLRB did not want to allow workers to hear multiple perspectives and make their own informed decisions. Abruzzo also fired a brief challenging the secret ballot process. She argued that signed authorization cards would be sufficient to qualify a union as the exclusive employee representative without giving employees the opportunity to actually vote. Card check, as it is called, is not a substitute for the electoral process, and the history of authorization cards is ripe with abuse from union organizers. Although private union membership has fallen to the lowest level since 1983, Abruzzo and the NLRB habitually overstate unionization movements to gin up mass interest from their complicit media allies. For example, this administration would have you believe that every Starbucks in America is unionized when only 304 of over 9,000 stores currently are unionized, or about 3%. Not only have a limited number of Starbucks actually unionized Starbucks stores, but employees have already begun to reconsider their decision to join a union and filed the petitions to remove Workers United in several Starbucks stores. All told, this administration's actions flip on its head the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals declaration that, em, quote, employees pick the union. The union does not pick the employees, end quote. The NLRA guarantees people the right to organize, but it stops there. It doesn't coerce people into organizing. Fundamentally, the NLRB's mass union drive turns on the question of choice. Do employers have a choice in what they can say to their employees? Do employees have the option not to join a union? Americans want options. We want to choose our physicians, our schools, our employment relations. And polling suggests that an overwhelming majority of union households support having more freedom to join or not to join. And 67% support the choice to resolve questions concerning union representation by secret ballot election. Small businesses have been hit hard for the last several years thanks to the Biden shutdown of the economy over the China virus, crippling small businesses across Virginia's 5th Congressional District and the country. The last thing American businesses need, need right now is for unelected bureaucrats to further undermine their efforts to survive. And we are here today to discuss several important pieces of le legislation. My Small Business Before Bureaucrats Act support small business owners over anti-choice NLRB bureaucrats. It does this by finally updating the jurisdictional, jurisdictional limits that govern when the NLRB can intervene in a business's affairs. 
Another key reform is the Employee Rights Act introduced by Representative Allen, which gives employees more control over their personal data, guarantees the right to vote by secret ballot, and empowers them to decide how they spend their hard-earned paycheck. I look forward to discussing my legislation, Representative Allen's legislation, and other policies solutions with our expert witnesses today. Hopefully we can reach a consensus on reversing the NLRB's disastrous political turn and on protecting Americans' right to earn a living as they see fit. 